Hi, this is Resident in Finland, and today we're going to be trying the Anamorph Fod 40 Anamorphic Adapter from SLR Magic into the DJI Osmo Action and with the Sirui 50mm Anamorphic Lens. When is too much Anamorphic? And for the impatient ones, no, it does not work with the DJI Osmo Action. It just doesn't. And if you mount it on the Sirui 50mm anamorphic lens, it gives you a aspect ratio of 3.14 to 1, which is just crazy, but it does work. But now let's go into some more details. Silly ones, because this is a silly video. But before getting into these details, why? Like, what is the point of this video? This is just for fun and for curiosity, mostly. Somebody asked me a question in YouTube on whether this anamorphic adapter, the SLR Magic Anamorph 40, it has a 1.33 squeeze factor, if it would work with the DJI Osmo Action. I had no idea even where to start from, but the same person suggested that the small rig cage does actually have a 52mm filter thread that you can just mount that thing. And actually had it home somewhere. I had to find it, mount it, and yes, this allows you to mount any filters that have a 52 mm thread into the DJI Osmo Action. So it's possible to mount it here. The problem is that it just doesn't work at all. Now what you can see, what you get as a result is this kind of silly, crazy looking windowed thing. If you remember from my review of the Anamorphot, this is exactly the same look we got when it was mounted into a zoom lens, the 18 to 135. On the white end, and this is wide lens, the uh, DJI Osmo Action, this, instead of having just the squeeze factor, it shows this kind of window looking thing in the middle. So now it does not work. But now let's take a look at why doesn't this work? Well, if you look at the specs of the Anamorph 40 adapter from SLR Magic, the 40 stands for the minimum diameter of the front element of the lens that you're mounting it to, and it says that it supports or it covers Super 35 or APS-C size sensors. Now I'm starting to wonder whether that 40 millimeter refers to the diameter of the front element of the lens you're mounting it to, or the focal length. Because based on what I've done with my tests, this adapter works as long as it's mounted into a lens that has an equivalent field of view of it's somewhere around 37, 38 millimeters or longer than that. If the lens has a wider equivalent field of view, then it doesn't work. Or rather, vignetting starts to come, or even this crazy windowing effect kind of thing. And here, the case of the DJI Osmo Action is very clear. This is an action cam with a very, very wide angle lens, and that's what's happening. This thing, the adapter, is a kind of a tube extension thingy with some glass elements, and because it's fairly long after the front elements of the lens you're mounting it to, this actually limits the amount of field of view that it can accept and then get into the lens. I think that field of view is roughly the equivalent to what the 38-ish millimeter focal length would give you in a full-frame camera. Right now, actually, just because I'm, I like to use the gear that I talk about in the videos, I have it mounted, the SLR Magic Anamorph 40, into a 17 millimeter f1.8 from Olympus, and I'm using the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. I have the stabilization on, so I get a little bit extra crop, and then I don't have any of the vignetting. So for anyone, by the way, that was interested to see how would this anamorphic uh, lens adapter work with Olympus lenses and Olympus cameras, here you go. Then the second crazy or silly idea that I wanted to try was to mount it on a zoom lens. That's something that we did in the review of the anamorph so you can see the link up here, and it didn't work very well, mostly because that was a super zoom from 18 to 135, and from 18 to quite a bit longer than that, it was vignetting very, very much, or having that crazy thing. I should probably try with a 70 to 200 to see what happens. There's gonna be another video coming with crazy test and this anamorph adapter. But now to the third test. I do have a Sirui 50 millimeter f1.8, anamorphic lens for micro four thirds, with a squeeze factor of 133. And I thought, what would happen if I would put this anamorphic adapter in front of the anamorphic lens? Let's go and do it. Mm -hmm. 
So first of all, let's talk about what does this give you. If you put the 1.33 anamorphic adapter in top of the 133 anamorphic lens, you multiply those two things and what you have is the squeeze factor on the horizontal axis of 1.77. And that means that you were going from a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, which is 177 to 1 aspect ratio of the sensor of the microprocessor's camera, into a wide scope of 2.36 to 1 aspect ratio, but now with the extra 133 squeeze factor of the adapter in front of the lens, now we're getting an aspect ratio of 3.14 to 1. Maybe I should call it a quasi pi to 1 aspect ratio. Or let's just call it pi to 1. So if you like a pi to 1 aspect ratio, this combination works for you. And as you can see, it kind of works. Now the question is, would anyone use this? Or even better, does anybody use this aspect ratio? And the answer is no. No one. I did a lot of research by looking at one Wikipedia page and I found that the aspect ratio of 2.76, which is very, very wide, wider than Cinemascope usually, that's something that has been used in some movies, maybe a recent one movie, Rogue One, and the next aspect ratio that comes after that, it's a 3.5 to 1, and the only thing it says in the fantastic Wikipedia page is that it's used in some Philips and Samsung TVs. And that's it, but I don't think that anybody uses it. And between the 2.76 and the 3.5, there's nothing. So according to Wikipedia, this is the useless aspect ratio. But now we're using it. But now we have used it. So it was useless, but used. And now that we talk that it has been unused, so it's potentially useless, let's have that question actually. It's unused, but is it useless? Meaning, could it be used if this would be useful for you? And I hope I'm still making sense. Well, you can see it here. I guess I could say the usual review of any lens ever made, which is it's sharper in the middle than in the corners. And that's still true. In the middle, it looks, I think, okay. So there's some softness and let's call it artistic. And then on the corners, it definitely gets much, much softer. But what would you expect? It was already soft without the adapter. The adapter makes everything softer. So this is extra soft. There you go. But I have to say that if you do nail the focus, and now that gets a bit tricky because you need to nail the focus manually from the lens first, and then also nail the focus of the adapter itself, it looks surprisingly good. I thought it would just look like a full massive mush, but actually it's something that if you would be into the pi to one aspect ratio, you might want to try this out. So now I've been testing it with the Silhouette 50 mm 1.8 anamorphic lens, which is the one I have. But if you have the versions for micro four thirds of the 35 or the 24, this might still work because those should give you a field of view that might still fit through this adapter. I'm not sure, so if somebody would do those tests, I would be curious to hear. Not that they would be really useful, but curiosity is something to be satisfied. So as a summary, no, you can't use, unless you really, really like that windowing effect for some reason, the anamorphic adapter, the Anamorph 40 with the DHGI Osmo Action. Yes, you can use it with a CDW 50mm f1.8, 1.33 anamorphic lens, and that gives you a pi to one aspect ratio so if that's something you're into now you know that it is possible i know this was a silly video but sometimes these things are just fun to do i hope you find it curious at the least and you had some fun watching me doing this crazy stuff with the anamorphot adapter and if you like the video please like and subscribe and we're gonna see you soon for some more content